So, uh, I guess, could you tell us about your latest project? Yeah. Justice, do you want to start? Yeah, um, absolutely. This record is kind of a amalgamation of so many different uh, elements coming together at once for me personally. Uh, I had got recording qu equipment and I really wanted to finally like bridge this gap of making music. And so uh, I decided I was going to write my own album. And at the same time that that happened, uh, this is around the same time that me and you had gotten together, uh, Grace, for uh, a sh that show mm -hmm. a couple years ago. And so I was like, well, and when I met you, I was like, well, I got to make music with this person. Like, there's just, there's no way that, like, somebody who cares this much about music, like, I, I have to make music with this person. So I was just threw it at them and was like, and you were like, yeah, of course. And I was like, okay, now I have my, because I'm in a death metal band also. I'm like, okay, I got this record. I got three records going on. I'm like, if I try to make all these things happen right now, it ain't going to happen. And so the basis of the album kind of from on my end started from uh amalgamating my solo record idea with uh making a record hit with grace uh loop super jams this record we yeah. made and i would say too like i remember i remember that year that we we played this gig i think it was summer of 2022 and we first mm -hmm. started working on this album or this ep it's fall of 2022 so it's been like over a year that we've been working on it and the first song we ever did was thunder dog and justice just sent me this kind of like bass loop with like a drum beat and yeah from then on it just kind of exploded it was nice for it to kind of start with just like yeah hey, let's make music together. And then it just kind of kept happening song after song. And now we're like, oh, I guess we'll just make an EP or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think the, and the, the wildest thing about Thunderdog too was that that's like, that was like when I got my new computer, that was the first thing that I like laid down in a DAW in Reaper was the like, foundation for thunderdog so it's it's wild that it's it, like most people's first thing that they record doesn't really become a song that they release um so i'm glad that the foundation for it became something as amazing as it did do you think you'll collaborate with like keep collaborating with other people are you are, asking both of us do you think are you, yeah like <laughs> Do you kind you kind of like this collaboration? I think it works though. I like <laughs> I love collaborating with other artists. I feel like I've always learned the most when I'm working with other people. Like before this was released, um, pretty much all of 2020 and 2021, when I was like working from home and um, like nothing was open. I was working remotely pretty much exactly how Justice and I were working. Like I was sending uh, just wave files back and forth and logic files back and forth with my friend. And I don't know, it's a really fun way to make music. So I would definitely do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise. I mean, I feel like for me, I learned so much from, from recording with other musicians I, I learned so much from uh, meeting new people, and it's it's not just a musical thing; it's it's a life thing, you know. And so, I take you know, music is just a way for me to have a community, you know. And so, like, without making music with other people, I, there there really isn't much for me to do. Um. Who do you think influenced you the most as far as music? I feel like, well, Gosh. I feel like for this record, it was a lot of Thundercat. <laughs> it seemed like it was a yeah, lot of absolutely. Thundercat. I mean, that's the, that's why Thunderdog is named Thunderdog. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, 
I mean, my biggest influences that made me like write the way that I kind of was writing the the record uh, was people like Anderson Pack, people like Thundercat, people that are very uh, you know using conventional tactics to make something non-conventional. Hey, I would say for me, um, I was listening to a lot more like electronic music um, or even just like alternative electronic. Like I was listening to a lot of Bjork and I was listening to her. Oh my God. It's not her debut album. Now I'm feeling silly. It's the one, it's the one with like the pink background post. I was listening to post. Um, and I just really love the production on it. I love how full it is. I love all the like little details. And I remember listening through on that album and thinking like, I want, I want to start learning more about production. I want to get more into production. I want to be a better producer. And this EP is kind of what did that for me. This was one of the first times where I felt like I went into like full producer mode. Um, so yeah, I would say Bjork was a big inspiration. There's definitely other artists, but like, of course, they're just totally slipping my mind right now. Like what motivates you to keep making music? (laughs) The fame. I'm just kidding. Gosh, I mean. (laughs) Everybody. Yeah. The non-existent. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, no, uh, I mean, I mean, it's, I think for me, it's the message that music and the power that music really has for me right now. I mean, I see when people enjoy art and it really speaks to them in a certain way. It brings them out with other people who, who also agree with that sentiment. And you can do a lot with that kind of power when it's, when it's used in the right way and when the right minds are, uh, attached to it you know uh and i think that's that at this point i mean before i mean if i if you were to ask me this question like four years ago i really couldn't give you a solid answer i was kind of lost as a musician and then really moving to downtown salem and and really seeing what uh people are doing not only with uh audio art but physical art um really made me change my perspective on what I can do with not only my voice, but my bass and any other instrument that's in my hands. I think for me, the the question was what inspires you to keep making music or doing music? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for me, there's something about music that's different than a lot of other art forms or that I connect with more than other art forms. It just feels like the most intuitive medium um in terms of like evoking emotion making people want to dance like it's just so natural and easy to do that with music and i love the fact that i get to affect people in that way i get to like let people Mm -hmm. tap into something that is deeper than they might know or yeah, it's just something that's, it's intrinsic, it's intuitive, it's just is like the most human thing for me that I feel like I can do. But also recently, I've like finally been able to start working with other musicians. I feel like for most of my life, I have been playing and writing music by myself. And starting in like 2019 or so, I finally started working with other people and like playing in a full band. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like the most fun thing ever. Like, I'm okay if this takes over my life, if it fully consumes me, because I'm just doing something I love with my friends and I get to be a part of the community. Yeah, so, it's awesome. I feel like music really teaches you how, like, like the chemistry you have with people, you know, like it, it really, you know. I don't know how to explain it, but it's easier to to find your good friends musically. It's a it's a much quicker process. I feel like. Yeah. That's neat. Yep. Good answers. Good answers, everybody. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What was your first concert? Like attending. My first. What was it? Go ahead, Greg first concert to attend or first concert to perform yeah 
Uh, two of ten. Oh, I actually have a pretty good answer. So, well, okay. My like first first concert where like my parents bought the tickets. It was like an arena concert, and um, or at least that I remember. It was Imagine Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, we're going to scratch that off the list because I do not want that to be my answer. But my real answer, my real <laughs> answer will actually be um, the first concert that I bought my own ticket to. It was in Boise. And um, at the time, I was co founder of a club at school called Trap Club, like as in trap music. And it was really more EDM. It wasn't just trap. We just listened to a lot of electronic music. And one of my favorite trap artists from London came to play. His name is Troy Boy. And so my first concert was actually a rave. Um, and it was so <laughs> funny because I'm pretty sure I was the only sober person there. And like, I think I showed up in like a jeans, like jeans and a striped t-shirt. And everyone around me had like bedazzled <laughs> bras. They looked incredible, but I was like front row too. Like I was so excited and it was a really good concert. He put on a really good show. So that was my first concert that like, that counts in my book. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> totally counts. My, my first concert. That is, that's that's such a tough question. I think my first concert that I ever went to was Macklemore and Ryan Lewis when I was in like probably like middle school. Um, and then I don't think I went to another show until well, I no, I went and saw this country artist who's I don't think he's very around anymore, but his name was Trent Tomlinson. Uh, I've I've been to every single genre of concert. Like my first metal concert I went to was Mushroom Head. Uh, not a great show. <laughs> I, I, yeah, they, yeah, those dudes put on. They, they had water drums, uh, yeah, and they were yeah. had like strobe lights, and so they were like hitting the water drums to the beat with the strobe lights on. It's pretty rad. Yeah. 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 Um, but that's the that show was the first time I ever saw a mosh pit, and that really like gave oh. me. <laughs> I guess like you could say it's like the first time I ever saw like what you could like what good music can do to people like the effect it has on people you know yeah i went to an old school mushroom head show it was not my first concert though but it was like oh, a, old school yeah. so old school mushroom head and like they spray water at you not not just on the drums like at the crowd yeah at you, in the crowd for sure yeah throw big mushrooms and they had the dresses and, and stuff on big marshmallows and like confetti i can't remember if there's glitter but probably it's a mess it is but it was great I, I know they wear the like dresses like the pink uh pink dress and their they, their outfits are totally different because they came out in their old school outfits during the show oh yeah and that's when they started playing stuff off of super buick and uh yeah great concert yeah yeah. That has been on repeat for a couple weeks is this artist called um, I think Nubia Garcia and again kind of like a fusion album she's combining like jazz and funk and cumbia and it's like uh, it's just such a beat I feel like I'm supposed to be listening to it like at night on the highway or something it's just really good so I'm going to go home and write all that down. Be like, I'm going to listen to them. <laughs> that sounds really Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Um, so uh, the last question is, what do you want people to know about your music? Wow. So I def uh, well, yeah. Uh, so many things. I want people to know so many things about, about our music. Uh, but in particular, that like, like I guess the one thing I wanted to get across with this, cause especially for me, because I've been making so much heavy metal for so long, was that this this album is like vibes, like chill vibes. Like I, I want people to get the impression, like if you've had like a long day at work or something, and you're trying to listen to music that's going to like settle your brain. Yeah, this is like the music for you. And it's not like 
monotone music, how I should say. Like, it's, like, still, like, it's got a beat to it. Like, you could still dance to it if you wanted to. Even if it's just, like, the I'm tired little shoulder shake or something like that. Like, that's still gonna work. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes, uh, I do. Def- But also, cool. like... <laughs> yeah. Like, I want, I want people to know, too, that, like... How should I say this? Like, because... One thing, like, in 2024, or at least in the last few years, like, people really want to know that, like, the artists they are listening to aren't, like, terrible people. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and so, like, which is totally fair. I mean, like, people have gone, you know, have, like, our age now are like, oh, you know, artists that I've listened to my entire life are starting to turn out to be garbage people, you know? And it's like, I want people to know, like, they could feel safe listening to our music knowing that, like, we care about the community and people and it's, it's, there's a message behind it. That's the actually music, how you know? Justin and I yeah. met. It was at one of the really, really free markets. Well, That's Ava right. Salem. That's how we first met actually back in like 2021. So yeah, <laughs> that, it wild. hasn't been that long. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's like almost three years ago now. Wow. Um, Trippy. Wow. I think what I want people to know, I guess I'm going to stick with just this record, this EP. I guess I just want people to know, I well, I don't know what they want to know about it. Like, I'm trying to think. I'm like, my answers keep being what I want people to do, rather what I want them to know. Um... Actually, I think, like, I'm going to go specifically onto the song Internet and Eight of Swords. Just, like, listen through to the lyrics a couple of times. I worked really hard on those lyrics. And they seem, especially Internet, it seems a little cryptic at first. But it does have a deeper meaning. And I'm not going to give away too much of it because I do want people to make their own meaning out of it. But just, like... Mm -hmm. For internet, it's really about the the dissonance between like our outer world and the internet, and just like a lot of the loneliness that the that just being online and social media can cause, the cognitive dissonance it can make you feel of like watching all these awful things happen around the world, um, like having access to all of that information and feeling powerless, like. I think a lot of the songs on this record, well, I know a lot of the songs on this record, there's like a really chill vibe to it. And it seems like that if you're not listening to the lyrics, but then when you listen back, they have kind of an existential twinge to them. So yeah, I guess just go back and listen to the lyrics, make your own meaning of them. Okay. Love that. Yeah. Great answers. (laughs) Um, so where can people find you? On, online, I Any, guess. For me, it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I have a website, stovamusic.com, uh, Bandcamp, Spotify, any streaming service. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And me, you could find me on instagram and you can find me on youtube at justice robinette music yeah uh i don't think i have any other socials at the top of my head i don't have uh, oh threads you can find me on threads okay uh, and tiktok and tiktok <laughs> that's the other one there we go that's all of them all yeah. the same justice robinette music okay Sweet. Anyway, so thank you guys for hanging out. And of course, sorry, thank you for having us. Sorry, I'm just in my car. It's not anything fun. But... No, no, no worries. But I'm yeah. in my car too. <laughs> Your car looks so fancy. <laughs> it's it's it's. Uh, if I were, to, I'm showing you the good half of my car right now. If I were to pan down, it would be a different scenario. <laughs> yeah. 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 I appreciate that compliment. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. 
Um, so, hopefully I will see you guys on the internet soon. Maybe in concert. Someday. I hope so. That would be Bring it into existence. <laughs> I'm going to say it right now. Here we go. Hopefully. Give, hopefully. give, it, give it like a year and a half. Yeah, I will. I will wait. <laughs> I'll be patient. Okay, I'll hold you to that. I will not text you every five <laughs> minutes. Like, are you going on tour now? Well, you know, you got to be better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> Maybe you like know, I respect that. Once a year, I'll be like, hey, when <laughs> when are you coming to Ohio? <laughs> I soon. know it's boring, but whether that's in the next year or two, soon. Soon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You come to Cleveland. Thank you so much. Not totally boring. But oh, thank you guys so much. Um, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. Later. Thanks. Bye, Holly. Bye. <laughs>